Okay, chapter 21, number 6. We're talking about two small spheres that are 20 centimeters apart that have equal charge. So we're going to go ahead and choose a positive charge just to label it. And now they're asking us how many electrons are present on each sphere if the force of repulsion is 4.57 times 10 to the negative 21 newtons. Since they're the same charge, they're going to be pushing away from each other. This is the force of repulsion. So F equals 4.57 times 10 to the negative 21 newtons. All right. They're asking for the excess amount of electrons that are going to be present. We do know that the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the 19th, negative 19th, coulombs per electron. This is a constant. It's in our book. So how are we going to get from this force that we have and this distance that we have to the number of possible electrons that we could have? Well, if we know what this Q is, we can figure out from the ratio of the total Q divided by this would give us the number of electrons. So what, how are we going to find this Q? We're going to turn to Coulomb's Law. I'm going to use K instead of the 1 over 4 pi e naught or epsilon naught. It's the same thing. Um, you, it's in the chapter in the book. Q1, Q2 divided by R squared. All right. So now all we need to do is plug in these numbers that we already have to figure out what our Q is. So since it tells us in the problem that these are equal charges, what we can do is say Q1 is equal to Q2. So therefore, this equation changes to F equals K Q squared over R squared. The absolute value signs can go away because once you square something, it's going to be positive. All right, now we can go ahead and insert the numbers that we have. I always like to put the units on when I'm doing calculations just to make sure that when I'm canceling out, I can go ahead and um, get the right units that I want on my uh, variables that I'm searching for. K is given in the book as a constant. It's 8.988 times 10 to the ninth newtons meters squared per coulomb squared. And you're going to multiply this by Q squared, which is what we're looking for, over R squared. R squared is the distance between the two points, 20 centimeters, but make sure that we convert it to meters since we're dealing with SI units whenever we have these equations. That's 0.2 meters. Q squared equals 4.57 times 10 to the negative 21 newtons divided by 8.988 times 10 to the ninth newtons meters squared coulomb squared times 0.2 meters squared. Take the square root of this. So the Q that you should come up with, the charge that you should come up with, Oh. is 1.43 times 10 to the negative 16th. And when we look at all our units, they cancel out to coulombs. After you take this square root, the instead of a coulomb squared, it's a coulombs. And we know that Q is measured in coulombs, so it, we probably have the right answer. The next step, now that we have the total charge that is present here is trying to figure out how many electrons are on the outside to make this um, make this charge happen. So what we do is we take the total Q, which is in C, coulombs, and we divide it by this constant that we already know, which is the charge per electron. Which we can see after you cancel out the units, you're going to get how many electrons are there. So we're going to do this 1.43 times 10 to the negative 16th, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, and 
are going to get something in the neighborhood of 891.33. Now, we can't put this 0.33 since electrons are quantized. That means they're whole numbers. You can't have part of an electron. So we're going to go ahead and round it down to 891 electrons.